towards heaven. Be motivated towards heaven. So as we are going to listen to the word of God this morning, I would request everyone to close your eyes in the presence of God and pray for a moment that Lord speak to me this morning so that I will be encouraged and I will be motivated with the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. 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 Oh, we thank you, Master. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. This morning, O Lord, help us to be concentrated in the presence of God. Help us to understand the real meaning of the word of God. Hallelujah. Father God, we are committing ourselves with the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. Father God, speak to us, O God. Speak to us, O God. Speak to us, O God. Hallelujah. 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 Help us to be, I mean, filled with the word of God. Help us to be increased by the word of God this morning, O Lord. Hallelujah. I mean, speak to us, O God, the spirit of the Lord. Let the spirit of the Lord speak to us, O God. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, we are giving ourselves the mighty hand of God. Speak to us, O God. Thank you for hearing a prayer, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. So the topic is be motivated towards the heaven. Be motivated towards the heaven. And that is based on um, Revelation chapter 22 verses 6 to 21. Revelation chapter 22 verses 6 to 21. So we are not going to read all those portions but we will be uh, reading some of the verses from the chapter um, in between uh, when I am explaining from those I mean, points. And uh, uh, let me ask you one thing. Are you all excited to go heaven? Are you all excited to go heaven? So what, a, what, a, what an excitement that you can see here. That you all are excited to go heaven, right? Hallelujah. That's great that we are excited to go heaven. And uh, I know that why you are excited for that. I know. You know that? Ah, the crown, the crown is there, the reward is there, and then? Hmm? I know that, you know, I was uh, 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 teaching from the book of Revelation for, for more than one year, right? You know, so I know that I explained many things about heaven and the heavenly things and uh, what is going to happen in the future and uh, uh, what will be there in heaven and what is new heaven and new earth and new Jerusalem city and all those things we were discussing and I was explaining all those things and by hearing that you all are excited to be there, right? Yes, yes, yes. But let me tell you one thing, you know, before we go to heaven, you know, we should be motivated for that, and we should have the excitement for that, and we should have achieved something, and there is a destination, and we need a preparation for that. We will come to that point. So listen, you know, once a pastor was preaching in a congregation, and he, that pastor was asking the congregation, um, are you all ready, are you all prepared enough to go to heaven? And all the congregation said, yeah, we are ready, Pastor, we are ready. They were raising their hands and saying, we are ready, Pastor, we are ready and we are prepared. And today, if, if Jesus is returning today, we will be with him today. Then uh, Pastor was saying, are you, are you sure that if Jesus is returning today, you will be with the Lord? Then all of them said, yes, Pastor, yes, Pastor, we are ready, we are ready, we are prepared and we will go with him. And then what happened? Pastor started to pray like this. Father God, send your son to this world right now. Father, send your son right now to this world. Let the second coming of Jesus happen right now. And he was praying and there was a sound of trumpet. There was a sound of trumpet. You know, um, this pastor already arranged one brother uh, sitting on the on the tree and he was having a trumpet and he was just uh, blowing that trumpet and that when that sound came all of them were uh, watching each other and they were looking at I mean each other and saying hey, 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 the trumpet is sounding and why we are not going then pa 
master said, this is going to happen. This is going to happen because you said that you are ready, you are ready and you are prepared but you are not taken up. Okay? So this is going to happen actually when Jesus is coming. So pastor was saying that, you know, you are, I know that you are excited to go heaven and you have the motivation also because of the many things that you have heard about the heaven and the new Jerusalem city, new heaven, new earth and all those things which is written in the book of Revelation. But I know one thing that many of the people are not ready for that. They are not preparing for the second coming of Jesus Christ and they are not preparing themselves for going to heaven. Heaven. Hallelujah. Kartamne sandile ki chhar ke padan. Sorgatilo to pogan. Namakhe agrah munda. Uttri namlo motivate daan. Pache palapur menda samphoi kina da. Namak kadin avishma. Idu preparation le ki namlo kadalna viri nila yen nola da. Deivatni atma va. Amen orpi ki vanda kudne badi aithono. So this is going to happen sometimes. Maybe you know when Jesus is coming. When Jesus is coming, when Jesus is returning, this will happen sometimes. You know, many of the people, those who we feel that okay, this, this person will be in heaven and that person will be in heaven, they won't be there in heaven. But the people, those who are that we are thinking, oh, this, this man will not be in heaven, but they will be, he will be there in heaven sometimes. You know, the things are going to change. The things are going to change, you know. We have to separate ourselves and we have to prepare ourselves for the second coming of Jesus Christ. That's what we want to, I mean, I mean share about and we want to think about this morning. I mean, so, um, you know, uh, you know the, the, the thing is, you know, the expectation is always fine and the excitement also is fine. But the question is, are we motivated towards heaven or are we preparing ourselves for his return? Then if we are motivated to heaven, then the question is, do we have any responsibility today? Okay? We are going to, going to see that point. You know, if you say that you are motivated to heaven and you are saying that you are excited to go to heaven, then the question is, are you preparing yourselves and do you have any responsibility in this world to do today? You know, most of the people are not thinking about that. You know, many of the people are thinking, I don't have any responsibility in this world to go to heaven. I don't want to do anything to go to heaven. But Bible very clearly says that you have to do something. You have some responsibilities, especially from Revelation chapter 22. You will understand that you have some responsibilities in order to go to heaven. Amen? So, we are always expecting the second coming of Jesus Christ. We are excited to go heaven. And we are always motivated to go heaven. The question is, are, we have, are, we, are you having any responsibility today in this world? And that motivation will guide you to the excitement and that will guide you to the achievement and the destination will be heaven. Okay, So we know that many of the people of this world, they intentionally going to hell. Okay, And we are sharing the gospel to those people but they are saying, no, no, we will be living in this world only and we will be uh, living uh, according to our own pleasures and the worldly pleasures and everything, enjoying everything in this world and they don't want to go to heaven. If we ask to them and they will say, we don't believe in heaven, we don't believe in Hell, there are many people, even our relatives, or you know, many of our relatives, I mean, as uh, Priyanka was sharing, you know, many of uh, uh, her relatives are not in Christ. We have to pray for them because we, they don't know what is the Christianity and they don't know, I mean, what is the I mean, real truth of the Bible. You know, we have to pray for them. There are many people, those who do not know there is a hell and there is a heaven. Okay? There are many people, those who don't believe that there is a heaven. No, they think that okay, after this life, I mean, what is going to happen, we do not know. They say, we do not know what is going to happen after the life and after this present life. And, and they think that okay, I mean, we may be becoming some other creatures or some other I mean, uh, 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 people or uh, uh, character or something after our life in this world. But Bible very clearly says that we have one more life after the death. We have one more life. I mean, that is the eternal life. That is the eternal life. So we are focusing for the eternal life. Okay? We the believers are not focusing for the worldly life. 
it is very temporary life and but we are always looking forward for the eternity and the eternal life that's the reason that it says in revelation chapter 22 verses 6 to 21 we have something to do i mean for the kingdom of god and we are reminded from that verse that the responsibilities as we are motivated to heaven I mean, you know, someone said like this, reality never happens without preparation, even if you are motivated for that. Reality never happens without, without preparation, even if you are motivated for that. You know, there are some uh, of my motivational speakers, right? The motivational speakers usually they will encourage the people to do something and if if you are not able to do something or if you are looking forward for i mean getting something or achieving something and the motivational speakers always will i mean help you and they will encourage you uh, to to gain that to achieve that and they will help you and uh, 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 telling many things that okay you can you can do this and you can do that and you will achieve it okay you will get it by doing all these things and uh, they will always motivate us and they will always support us and they they will always um, um, encourage every one of us and uh, to, to, to receive that, to, to achieve that. But at the same time, remember one thing, the motivational speakers or the pastors or the, the evangelists or the teachers, I mean, even though they are speaking about the, about the Bible or about the heaven, about the I mean, Christian truths or everything, they cannot take you to heaven. You are supposed to go there by your holy life. Okay, so the motivational speakers, the pastors, the evangelists, you know, in Bible we understand, uh, I mean, there were many pastors and there were many apostles and teachers and evangelists and all prophets were there. All those people were preaching and teaching and prophesying to the people and they were all encouraging the people to go heaven. Okay? They were showing the way to heaven. Jesus was preaching about heaven, kingdom of God. Hmm? Jesus was living in this world and he was preaching the gospel and he was sharing about the kingdom of God and he was excited to go there because he knew that I mean all these people will be there the people of God will be there in heaven Father God will be there in heaven and I also want to go there while he was in, in, in his public ministry so we have to understand why these people were encouraging us why these preachers and these pastors and these apostles, prophets and teachers, they, why they were encouraging us, why they were motivating us? Because they were knowing that they can only motivate us, they can only encourage us, but they cannot take us into heaven. It is our responsibility to do something in this world, when we are living in this world, then we will be taken into heaven with such to God. Okay. So God will take you to heaven if you are doing everything properly in this world. Okay, so we will go to that point. You know, remember, it is always good to be aware about the destination and the and the greatness. I mean, of uh, and the glory of a destination and the motivational. I mean, speakers can encourage you, but you are supposed to be there. You are supposed to be there. You have to work hard for that. Then think about the I mean, Old Testament. Uh, I mean, saints. Okay. The Old Testament saints, they were all motivated about the heavenly city, the New Jerusalem city. Okay. And also, the, 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 uh, the New Testament I mean, uh, church fathers, they were always fixing their eyes upon, upon above and looking forward for the heavenly things. Okay. You go to I mean, Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11, verses uh, uh, 10. Uh, first of all, you can read uh, verses 10. Then after that we will read 13 to 16. You know what the Old Testament people and the uh, New Testament church fathers were expecting and what was their expectation? Yeah, read verse 10. Uh, Hebrews 11 verse 10. 10 yeah. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations. Those architect and builder is God. Verse number 14. 13. 13 verse number 13 mm -hmm. all these people were still living by faith when they died mm -hmm. they did not receive the thing promised they only saw they only saw them and welcomed them from a distance admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth verse number 14 people yeah. who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own okay, listen you know the Old Testament 
people always they were thinking about the heavenly things of the new jerusalem city or a new city which is prepared for them you know the reason is in the prophetical books of the old testament there are many things which is written about the future things okay which is going to happen in the future and uh, i mean where these people will be and these things are there and when they are listening to the prophetical words of the i mean prophets of the old testament and also when they were going through the scriptures they understood that there is an expectation and what was their expectation for he was looking they were looking for the city which has foundations when they know the jerusalem city and they know how the jerusalem city was i mean destroyed and they know i mean what is going to happen with the the physical uh, jerusalem city but they were waiting and expecting for the the heavenly city the heavenly city and it says that in malayalam it says that i mean devam silpiyai nirmichadum adisthanam ulladumaya nagarathinai tavarendiyadu kaathirundo so that means they were waiting and looking for word for the city which has foundations and which the the, the architect is i mean lord jesus and the builder is god and also it says that all these died in faith without receiving the promises no the people those who were living in the old testament especially some of them some of them were in the new testament period also they all died they all died without receiving the promises okay you can count it as a, as a maybe the 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 the, land, the promised land of canaan and also the heavenly kingdom the heavenly kingdom so they could not experience the heavenly kingdom physically i mean and it says that all these died in faith and they were having the faith and they believed that without receiving the promises but having seen them and having welcomed them from the distance and having confessed that they were strangers and exiles on the earth for those who say such things make it clear that they are seeking a country of their own and indeed if they had been thinking of that country from which they went out they would have had opportunity opportunity to return but as it is written they desire a better country they desire a better country that is a heavenly one therefore god is not ashamed to be called their god for he has prepared a city for them hallelujah the old testament people they were also expecting and they were saying oh there is a heavenly city prepared for us hallelujah there is a heavenly city prepared for us and even the new testament people especially the apostles and uh, and all the other people those who were i mean believing in jesus christ and becoming christians and they were always looking upward i mean when when jesus was talking about the kingdom of god they were looking above and they were saying oh we are expecting that kingdom of god we need to have that kingdom of god and jesus said you have the kingdom of god in you now amen hallelujah among you the kingdom of god is there that means i mean we can experience the experience and the presence of the god and also the the experience of the the, the kingdom of god in in us and in our church in our life amen by by the word of god by the word of god i mean remember you know when we think about all these things you know i mean uh, the motivation and the assurance of heaven will surely help us not to be careless but to fulfill our spiritual duties you know today most of the people most of the believers are careless and they don't care anything about the spiritual things and they are not doing anything I mean, so carelessness comes because they they do not know about clearly about heaven and they are not clearly motivated with the, the heaven so that's the reason they are so careless okay even uh, when you read uh, maybe uh, a book of acts and everything you will understand all those i mean things that uh, uh, we, go, we will go through maybe later okay let us understand what are the responsibilities of a person let's understand what are the responsibilities of a uh, of a believer i mean yeah the responsibilities of a believer 
mean, mainly I would like to share with you maybe four responsibilities which is written in Revelation chapter 22. Okay, Revelation chapter 22 uh, verses 6 to 21. There are mainly four responsibilities for a believer if you are motivated to heaven. Okay, before going to heaven, in this world you will have to I mean, take care of all these things. First of all, the responsibility of keeping God's word. <clears throat> the responsibility of keeping God's word. We will read Revelation chapter 22 verses 6 to 8. Yeah. Revelation the, chapter 22. The angel verse said eight. to me, <laughs> these words are trustworthy and true. <laughs> the Lord, the God who inspires the prophet sent his angel to show his servants the things that must soon take place. Look, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the word of the prophecy written in this scroll. I, John, am the one who heard... Now, now 18, verse 18 and 19 also. Verse 18 and 19. Verse 18. Yeah. I warn everyone who hears the word of the prophecy of the scroll. If anyone adds anything to them, God will add to that person the plague described in the scroll. Yeah. And if anyone takes word away from the scroll of prophecy... God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life. Okay, so in these verses, you know, in these verses, uh, Apostle John is emphasizing about what is the importance of the God's word. What is the importance of the God's word? Why should we obey the word of God? Why should we obey the word of God? Okay, this is the first responsibility of a person who is already motivated to heaven. You know, we are motivated to heaven and we are increased to be there in heaven. But the first responsibility is responsibility of keeping God's word. Keeping God's word. And John is always emphasizing not only in the book of Revelation, even in his gospel and in his epistles also. He is always emphasizing about I mean, word of God, even, even God, John's gospel. You know, John's gospel, he is emphasizing the word of God, the importance of the word of God, word of God, word of God. You know, why again, Apostle John is, I mean, emphasizing about obeying the word of God, keeping the word of God. I mean, in order to understand that that is your responsibility. That is your responsibility. If you are motivated to heaven, and if you want to go to heaven, you will have to obey the word of God. And also, the reasons are written in these verses, verses 6 to 8 and 18 and 19, that why should we obey this word of God? Because these words are faithful and true in verse 6. Okay? The words of God, the word of God is faithful and true. That's the reason that we should obey the word of God. Because John is convinced by hearing and seeing these things directly from the Lord. Verse 8. When, so John has seen all these things and he is convinced by hearing and seeing these things directly from the Lord. So as he has the experience from the Lord and as he is watching directly from the Lord and as he is I mean, uh, uh, recording everything in a book and we have to understand, you know, he is convinced about hearing the word of God and he says that I mean, we should obey the word of God. Then, because I have the personal experience that I have seen everything. I have seen everything. And also, why should we obey the word of God? Because he reveals God is same who spoke to the Old Testament prophets and the New Testament people. Then. <coughs> Okay, listen. So, there are many reasons that Apostle John is explaining here that why we should obey the word of God. Amen? Do you believe that we should obey the word of God to go heaven? Yeah. Amen? So, we should obey the word of God and Apostle John is trying to explain what are the reasons that we should obey the word of God. First of all, he said that because the word of God is faithful and true. The Lord, whatever he says, that is yes. Okay, that is yes. Amen. So there is no change in his words. 
when god is i mean unchangeable and god's words are unchangeable so we cannot change the word of god because there is a truth in the word of god there is a faithfulness in the word of god that's the reason when apostle john is saying that you have to i mean obey the word of god amen and secondly he says that i mean he is convinced by hearing and seeing these things directly from the lord and again we have to obey the word of god because he reveals god is same who spoke to the old testament prophets and the people in the new testament when you know there are there are there are people believing uh, the old testament god is different and new testament god is different okay the people some, there are some believers they believe uh, the old testament god is who is the old testament god hello hello you don't know hello him Ah. Jehovah. Jehovah is the Old Testament God and who is the God of New Testament? Someone said Jesus. Huh? See, Jehovah and Jesus is same. So, you know, here Apostle John is trying to emphasize one thing that the Lord or God who was in the Old Testament is the same in the New Testament. and the lord is same there is no change at all the lord is same in the old testament and that god spoke to the old testament prophets and the people and the same god is speaking to the new testament people hallelujah in in verse 9 you can see that you know there is a there, there, there is a thing that which we can understand that god is same forever and ever in the old testament and in the new testament okay and again why should we i mean obey the word of god because of the unity of the word of god because of the unity of the word of god what do you mean by that you know john is trying to prove here the unity of god's word that means he proved that scripture itself is the best interpreter of the bible that means he is using many images of the old testament in his book of revelation <coughs> scripture itself is the interpreter of the bible you know sometimes we in order to interpret you know when i was taking the book of revelation classes uh, i was just checking with uh, some other commentaries to get some of the ideas or some of the uh, interpretations you know and and i came to know that you know uh, going through all these commentaries it is better to read bible itself that everything is written in the bible you know there is a unity in the word of god there is a unity in every 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 book of the bible you know there are 66 books are there and there are many things written in the bible and there are many things we can understand that there is a unity in the bible each books are connected together each books are connected together you know when we understand that that's a, that's an excitement thing that you know you know every book is connected together you know uh, last week we started uh, the study of travel undarun book of romans we already started book orala kai vakkir sutri par undarun okay book of romans okay so i was saying you know um Uh, yeah uh, yeah i uh, let me ask you one question uh, from that book of romans you know which is the, which is the first pauline epistle written means written by paul which is the first uh, uh, pauline epistle chronologically hmm? according to the order of the bible romans is according to the order of the bible romans is the first book written by paul but chronologically according to the dates first thessalonian and the la yeah yeah somebody is looking at the notes <laughs> you know <laughs> okay the last the last book which was written by apostle paul chronologically was second timothy okay then how come the romans just right after the acts okay right after the acts the book of romans is coming because we understand the people those who were compiling the books there in the bible that they were knowing the importance of the truth of the bible they were knowing and the spirit of the lord was speaking to them that this is the way that you have to do this you have to compile these books in this way because it has an importance hallelujah so after the book of acts in the book of facts there are many things written the histories are there and uh, only one historical book in the new testament is book of facts 
Okay, and in the book of Acts, the Acts of Apostles, the I mean, life story of Jesus Christ and life uh, history of Jesus Christ and the work of Jesus Christ, work of Holy Spirit, everything is written there. Then right after that, Romans is coming and saying that this is the real truth of the Bible. What is the justification by faith and righteousness and all those things are coming. Sanctification, I mean, justification and glorification, all these things are coming. To erase the people of God in a, in a, in a different way, in a proper way. Amen? So God was guiding these people to do that. Amen? So we have to understand that. So the point is, you know, there is a unity in the word of God. There is a unity in the word of God. You know, there is a connection, you know. Uh, you may be having a reference Bible with you, maybe. Some, somebody is having reference Bible, you know. You know, you will you will see some of the verses which are written maybe in the middle or in the side. I mean, which is connected to that word because I mean something is written, one verse is there, and then something will be connected with to that word. Okay, in somewhere, somewhere, maybe from Genesis you can take from the Revelation. Okay, the first book is Genesis, but you will get something from Book of Revelation. There are many things. Okay, so this is the speciality of the Word of God. So this is the reason that Apostle John is emphasizing that you have to remember the Word of God. You have to keep the Word of God. You have to obey the Word of God. Hallelujah. And also, we know that the obedience of a believer is always based on his love towards God. The obedience of a believer is always happening because of the love towards God. Okay. We are not going to be able to do this. We are not going to be able to do this. consuming fire. No. You know, sometimes you know, the people are saying, God is a consuming fire. Consuming fire. No. No. Do you pick it? Who is God? Oh, God is a loving God. Oh, God is a gracious Lord. At the same time, He is a consuming fire. He is a consuming fire. At the same time, we are obeying the word of God only because it comes from the love of God. Hallelujah. We are loving Him. You know, especially, uh, maybe, maybe, um, and, uh, what is that? Okay, in, 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 in his gospel. Okay, John in his gospel and in, in, in his epistles also you can see. I mean, there are many places that he is emphasizing that we are loving God, we are loving God and we are obeying God. Okay? We are obeying the commandment of God because we love God. Okay? In John chapter 14 verse 15, 25 verse 10 and 14 verse 21 and first John chapter 2 um, verses 3 and 4 and chapter 5 verses 2 and 3. Remember, if you are truly loving God, if you are truly loving God, you will definitely obey His word without question. Many times, you know, when the word of God comes to us, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you truly love God, there is no doubt at all, without any question, you will obey the word of God. Whatever it may be. Whatever it may be. When, when the word of God comes to us, hallelujah, and the word of God speaks to the heart of a person, when that person will obey that word because you love God, truly love God. That's the reason, I mean, again and again, I mean, Apostle John is emphasizing about obeying the word of God because you are loving God. You are loving God. And God is loving you. And all those things. I mean, you know, I, I have seen many times, many of the people, they are just manipulating or misusing the Bible verses for their own gain. Okay? So, you know, taking one verse and uh, saying, okay, this is the meaning of this verse. Okay. Uh, only for the personal gain. Okay, and uh, if somebody is asking, okay, why you are, uh, uh, I mean, taking that verse in that way? And he says, this is the, this is the meaning of this, and this, and I, I am interpreting in this, this way because I don't want to obey that. Okay, so the Bible very clearly says that the baptism should be in the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and it should be immersion baptism. Okay, so the child baptism people they are 
finding out some of the verses from there and that family was taken baptism the children also were there and they could have baptized the children also you know interpreting manipulating that verse that thing in different way for their gain for their personal gain okay but the bible says that whatever the Bi whatever is written in the bible is true and it is believable it is faithful and it is true you have to obey the word of god as it is you don't want to go to I mean, any other places to I mean, understand or to or to to get the interpretation of that word because the word of god is enough to interpret the word of god the word of god is enough to interpret the bible then so that's the reason i said uh, in uh, even in uh, 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 chapter 22 revelation chapter 22 verses 18 and 19 it is very clearly written that when i testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book if anyone adds to them god will add him the plague which are written in this book and if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy god will take away his part from the tree of life and from the holy city which are written in this book what a tremendous verse it is we don't have right to add anything we don't have right to take away anything from the word of god hallelujah and we are supposed to obey the word of god as it is there are many reasons for that secondly the second responsibility the second responsibility is serving the lord <coughs> serving the lord chapter 22 <coughs> verses 12 to 14 read Revelations 22 verse 12 Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me and I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Verse 14 Blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Okay, the second responsibility of a believer before going heaven, before <clears throat> motivated to be heaven, you know, the second responsibility is serving the Lord. It is very simple. It is very simple, serving the Lord. Then, here he reminds us about the beam of seat of Jesus Christ. The beam of seat of Jesus Christ, that means the rewarding ceremony of a believer. That means there is a reward for our sufferings and our service we will be judged according to our work and the intention behind our work that means everything is recorded in heaven okay after reaching heaven there will be a bima seat of jesus christ and jesus christ will be i mean seated there seated over there and we will be judged and we will be getting the rewards and the awards from the lord the crowns and everything that is what i mean cedric was saying you know we are expecting the crowns there hallelujah we will be getting that but before doing that before getting that god is checking with the recording which is already recorded in the heaven that it says that okay this person did this and this person's intention was this okay so we are suffering for the lord and we are i mean taking the sufferings of the lord and also we are doing many things for the kingdom of god at the same time god is checking whether he was doing that for the kingdom of god faithfully or sincerely Okay? So God is checking and God already recorded everything in heaven, whatever we are doing in this world. Amen? So that's the reason it says that our service is important in the presence of God. So the second responsibility of a person who is motivated to heaven is serving the Lord. Serving the Lord. Amen? You can do anything for the name of the Lord. You can do, you can serve the Lord in any ways with different capacities i mean god has given the talents right god has given the talents and god has given the grace to do many things i mean so when you are asked to do something do it for the kingdom of god do it for the I mean, glory of the name of the lord not for you not for anyone of this world but god's name for god's name for god's sake hallelujah you know in the New Testament we read, especially in Acts chapter 2 and 5, we understand 
the believers, the early Christian believers, they became so careless people and lazy people because of one thing. You know, they were always hearing that Jesus said, I will be coming soon, I will be coming soon, I will be coming soon. So what happened? You know, right after the resurrection of Jesus, right after the ascension of Jesus Christ, I mean, we know that in Acts chapter 2 and 5 also we read, the people keep their job and they sold their property, they brought to the, I mean, apostles' feet and they were sharing with others and sitting and praying and waiting for Jesus' return at the feet of the apostles. They sold everything all the properties and uh, they keep the job and they were not doing sitting simply sitting at the feet of apostles and listening the word of god for example one family and then yes and Sephira, they came they sold everything but took something back and gave everything to the feet of Jesus, feet of apostles. We know that all the story. But the thing is, later, you no, know, in the beginning they were doing all these things because they were they were saying, okay, next day the Jesus is coming. The next day Jesus is coming. Why should we keep all these things here? They were thinking in that way. Okay, next day Jesus is coming. We should not keep all these things and we can. I mean, what is that? Uh, sell everything and all the property and everything and, and quit the job and we don't do anything. Job or something. We are just waiting here and Jesus is coming. So praying, 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 Jesus is coming. That led those people into a careless attitude and they were not doing anything. But later, later, I mean, I mean, I mean the apostle told them that this is not good because you will become lazy people. You will become careless believers. Then, then apostles are encouraging them to work hard, find your livelihood, and share to others. Faithfully serve the Lord, because your crown is waiting in heaven. It is not for, not for the unfaithful people, but it is for the sincere people. Hallelujah. You know, this morning, let me tell you one thing. As we are living in this world, we have something to do. We have something to do. We have to serve the Lord. We have to call upon the Lord and serving Lord in different areas and different capacities. I mean, so that is what God is I mean, desiring from the people of God. I mean, something to do. Do something. Do something. Don't be careless people. Don't be lazy people. Don't be, I mean, I mean people I mean, I mean, uh, not doing anything. But do something for the name of the Lord. Do something for the kingdom of God. That is what we understand the second responsibility of a person I mean, who is motivated to go to heaven. Hallelujah. And the third responsibility will go to that point now. We must keep our lives in purity. We must keep our life in purity. Read maybe chapter 22 verse 11, 14 and 15 once again. Chapter 2, Revelations 22 verse 11. Let the one who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let the wild person continue to be wild. Let the one who does right continue to do right. And let the holy person continue to be holy. Verse number 14. Blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Verse number 15, outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexual immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves, the pre who loves and practices falsehood. Verse number 16, yeah, that's it. Okay, you know, what is that? You know, in Malala, it is reading uh, uh, in verse 11. And either say in the millennium, and either say it, I could love in him. I could love in him. I do card at ten hour. The I could love in him. I do card at ten. Let him play in that. Let him play in that. That means I do card it. 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 I do so we should keep our lives in holiness and purity. Okay, that is a responsibility. Let the one who does wrong still do wrong. Still do wrong. Or Adikulam in India, Aduke, Adikote, Anath play Chedota. Am only desires Nathana, play Chedanata. Ningla very no key to Shmikatagari Villa, Hatta Renandriamo. 
Amen. Let the one who is righteous still practice righteousness. Hallelujah. So this is the this is the message that God is giving to every one of us this morning. That amen. Let the person who is amen. I mean who is doing righteous things. Amen. Still practice righteousness, and the one who is holy still keep himself holy hallelujah so let us also pray well lord we need to be holy in the presence of god and again in verses 14 and 15 i mean apostle john is i mean categorizing two group of people one group is included in the holy city and the other group is excluded from the holy city in 14 and 16 hmm? one group is included in the holy city and the other group is excluded from the holy city verses 14 and 15 okay jeevan de vrachathinte um, yeah mm, 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 okay naayikalkum shudrakarkum dudanarpaarkum kolabadavanmarum bimbaradigalum boshtil priyapadunavarum adine pravartikkeyum cheyina evanu evediyana porathana ennal 14th vakyam jeevan de pusthakathil vrachathinte vrachathil thangal kadigaram undagendadinum govarangalil koodi nagarathil kadakkedan thangalil vastram alakkunavar aarana Hagevan Mar, hallelujah. So we are the people, those who are, I mean, washing the garments that God is God has given us. Hallelujah. And we have to I mean, become more holy to go to heaven. Hallelujah. We, we know that we are excited. And we know that we are motivated to go to heaven, but we need a cleansing. Hallelujah. We need a cleansing and we need a, a purity in our heart and we need a purity in our Christian life. Hallelujah. That's what we understand. And I mean, Apostle John is categorizing two groups of people. The one group is included and the other group is excluded because of the unholy life of those people. Hallelujah. And the one group is washed their garments with the blood of Jesus Christ and the one group is enjoying the worldly pleasures. Hallelujah. So we need a, we need a regular process of sanctification in our life. Okay. You know, we know that we are the people of God. We know that we are the saints of God. We know that uh, we are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. We become the children of God. But still, we need a sanctification, right? Still, we need a process of sanctification. It is a daily basis process. Then, it's not, I mean, we are, we are thinking that, okay, it is done. I am a saint of God. I am a child of God. I become a child of God. And some people are believe, I'm thinking that, okay, that is enough. Okay? Once I am saved and once I got the power of the Holy Spirit and that is enough. No, Bible says that that is not enough. Again and again, daily basis, but regularly when I mean, you have to ask pardon in the presence of God, forgiveness in the presence of God, whatever shortcomings are coming in our lives and whatever we do against the will of God. Hallelujah. And we will go to the fourth responsibility I mean, and we will I mean, close our message today. And the fourth responsibility is the responsibility of being reminded about his return at any time. Then responsibility of being reminded about his return at any time. Hallelujah. But a great point that is in seven I mean chapter twenty two verse seven, twelve and twenty. Let's read that verses maybe. Look, I am coming soon. Mm. Blessed is the one who keeps the words mm. of the prophecy written in the scroll. Mm. Verse number twelve. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me and I will give it to each person according to what they have done. Verse number 20. Uh, he who testifies of these things shall say, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. See, three times in this chapter, Apostle John is saying that Jesus, I mean Jesus said, Behold, I am coming quickly. Behold, I am coming quickly. But he delayed his return more than 2,000 years. Why? You know, many times, three times in, in this particular chapter itself, Jesus said, I'm coming quickly, I'm coming quickly, I'm coming quickly. But that didn't happen. And Jesus is de delayed more than 2,000 years now. Why? Why? The reason is written there. The reason is written there. You know, in Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9. Then we know that his return is getting delayed because I mean, he wished all to repent, not to perish and to be saved. 
ഹലലൂയ എല്ലാവരും രക്ഷിക്കപ്പെടണമെന്ന് എല്ലാവരും മാനസാന്തരപ്പെടണമെന്ന് ആരുദ്ദേശിക്കുന്നു ദൈവം ആഗ്രഹിക്കുന്നു ഹലലൂയ അതുകൊണ്ട് കർത്താവിന്റെ വരവ് എന്ത് ചെയ്യുന്നു മാന്തിക്കുന്നു കർത്താവിന്റെ വരവ് താമസിക്കുന്നു എന്തുകൊണ്ടാണെന്നറിയാമോ എല്ലാവരും രക്ഷിക്കപ്പെടാൻ കർത്താവ് ആഗ്രഹിക്കുന്നു ഹലലൂയ നമ്മുടെ പ്രിയപ്പെട്ടവര് നമ്മുടെ ബന്ധുമിത്രാദികൾ നമ്മുടെ ഗ്രൂപ്പിൽപ്പെട്ട ആളുകളാണെങ്കിലും അമ്മ നമ്മുടെ നൈബേഴ്സ് ആണെങ്കിലും നമ്മുടെ ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് ആണെങ്കിലും നമ്മുടെ മക്കളാണെങ്കിലും മാതാപിതാക്കളാണെങ്കിലും എല്ലാവർക്കും വേണ്ടി നമുക്ക് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കാം ഹലലൂയ കർത്താവിന്റെ വരവ് താമസിക്കുന്നോറും നമ്മുടെ എല്ലാ പ്രിയപ്പെട്ടവരും കർത്താവിന്റെ സ്ഥലത്തേക്ക് കടന്നു വരട്ടെ ഹാലലൂയ ലെസ് പ്രേ ഫോർ ഓൾ ദി പീപ്പിൾ ദോസ് ഹു ആർ റിലേറ്റഡ് ടു വാസ് ഹാലലൂയ നോട്ട് ഇൻ ക്രൈസ്റ്റ് ഹാലലൂയ സോ ദാറ്റ് ഇവൻ ഈവൻ ദോ ഐ മീൻ ദ ഐ മീൻ റിട്ടർൺ ഓഫ് ജീസസ് ക്രൈസ്റ്റ് ഇസ് ഡിലേഡ് ഐ മീൻ ലെറ്റ്സ് പ്രേ ദാറ്റ് ലെറ്റ് ഓൾ ദോസ് പീപ്പിൾ ആൾസോ ഷുഡ് കം ടു ക്രൈസ്റ്റ് ഹാലലൂയ ഹാലലൂയ ആൻഡ് ദിസ് ഇസ് ദി ഓപ്പർച്യൂണിറ്റി ഫോർ അൺബിലീവേഴ്സ് ടു ബി സേവ്ഡ് Amen. Delay of Jesus Christ, the return of Jesus Christ is the opportunity for unbelievers to be saved and it's an opportunity for believers to bring many to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Let's take that challenge this morning. Let's take that challenge this morning and let's pray, O oh Lord, help me, O oh Lord, help me, O oh Lord, help me, O oh Lord, to bring many people into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Father God, I mean, Lord, we thank you that uh, you are delaying your coming and so that we also will be preparing ourselves and we will be preparing other people also and bringing other people also into the kingdom of God. So we all stand together in the presence of God and let's pray together. Hallelujah. 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 I request, I mean, I mean we, we, we are...